We know that when you engage children in the design of their learning environments, when you ask them at the end of every lesson, did that work for you? You know, was I too strict? You know, when you really honestly ask for their interpretation of, of learning, you learn from them and they learn better. What you get is that sort of metacognition. You get a you get a, a meta level reflection on learning. All the time they're learning, they're thinking about how they're learning. And I'll absolutely promise you, if that happens for your children in your classroom, they will do twenty percent better. You get an extra Friday every week in terms of in terms of performance. I mean it's absolutely a secret weapon. Why? Well because it, it, it turns you from being a consumer of learning to being a, you know, a researcher, a co-producer, uh, an explorer. And that's a much more exciting, more exhilarating role, you know. Uh, but also, you discover how to learn better. And the children find that, well, actually, I'm quite a kinesthetic learner. I like to learn with others. Um, when I'm really tired, I like to be quite a passive learner. Um, for me, learning is about rhythms and pictures rather than, you know, they, they keep coming up with a whole range of different ways that they learn. And not only do they learn from that, but the teachers teach better as a result. Uh, on the one hand, you know, I can see that, that we've got children engaged in learning about learning, they reflect on their learning. The minute you engage them in that meta-level learning, they think, well, I'm learning this, but I wonder how I'm learning this, I wonder how I might do it better. You know, this, is, this math is all very interesting, but I think the rhythm is more important to me than the picture you know the minute they start thinking about that and chatting about it in the playground you you see a dramatic acceleration so on the one hand we might engage our children and our teachers as as researchers really reflecting daily on on how they might learn better uh, and of course with stuff appearing you know you, youtube didn't exist 18 months ago you know now it's 200 million people a day watch it and they've just sold it for over a billion euros you know so i don't think policy can move that quickly so that the nightmare scenario that runs as an alternative is that we just try and lock everything down we say this is all moving too quickly you know um so children will have to power down to come to school you know when they come in they're going to turn all their stuff off and uh you know if they're using google to, to to look up essays rather than thinking of a 21st century task which might be find an essay and improve it, find another another essay and critique it, you know, we'll just pretend that Google doesn't exist and we'll, we'll not let them do homework at all and we'll lock them in a room to do coursework, you know. So there's a kind of nightmare scenario we should lock it all down and there's an exhilarating scenario where every single one of us is trying to help reinvent the future and every day it gets a little better. I mean, you, you know where I'm going to be on that choice. <laughs>